Considering the amount of injuries the Eagles have sustained in their defensive backfield, Sean Desai has had to limit some of his creativity. But with the addition of Kevin Byard, as well as the return of Reed Blankenship to go along with Sidney Brown, that should change very soon. During Desai's time in Seattle and Chicago, both of those defenses ranked in the top 10 in percentage of dime personnel used. We saw a hint of this to start the year before the Eagles caught the injury bug. On this play against the Patriots, the Eagles are running cover six, where they are playing quarters to the passing strength and cover two to the opposite side. Against trips formations, a very common way for the Eagles to account for the third receiver to the trip side is to have the cover two safety use a poach or tricks adjustment, where they will match the number three receiver if he runs vertical or a crossing route back across the field. This leaves the backside corner one on one though, and if you're facing a stud receiver like, say, Stefan Diggs in week 12, that could be an issue. In this dime package look though, Desai changes up the responsibility on the number three receiver. He puts a faster dime backer, Terrell Edmonds in this case, in place of the middle linebacker. Typically, that player will sink under a vertical route from the number three and look to wall off any crossing routes. In this variation, Edmonds is the one matching the number three receiver on anything vertical. This changes a number of things for the defense. To the weak side, the safety can now stay over top of the number one receiver and provide deep help. To the strong side, a number of different things can happen that are advantageous to the defense. On this play, the Patriots are running a dagger concept, where they run a clear out with the tight end, send the number two to the flat, and run a dig with the number one. In quarters, the safety typically man matches the number two receiver if they run vertical. Here, since the number two runs a quick out route, this frees up the safety to freelance a bit. He can help leverage the number three receiver running deep or stay in the passing window for the number one running the dig. In this case, he does both and the throw is forced underneath to a receiver that is blanketed by Avante Maddox. That's just one variation of dagger though. Let's see how that would play out a different way. Now let's say the number three runs to the flat and number two runs the clear out. Now Maddox would carry the number two up to the safety and widen out to the flat route. With the number three gone to the flat, the dimebacker is now free to look for crossing routes coming back. Here, he can get into the throwing window of the dig, and that is amplified by the fact that safeties have more range to get out there than a typical linebacker. The flat defender can also help muddy the window for the dig if he widens to the flat route from depth, forcing the throw underneath where he can rally to the ball from the top down. Let's look at some other popular route combinations from trips formations and see how they might play out. Here's a look at how a flood concept would play out. The corner matches the number one on the clear out, the safety matches number two on the deep out, with the nickel providing underneath support as they widen out to the flat route. What if the offense runs a Y sail concept instead? Again, the corner matches number one deep. With the number two receiver running to the flat, the nickel would take him. With no deep threat, the safety can help bracket the number three receiver running the corner route. How about a double post wheel combo? The corner and safety would match number one and two vertical, with the nickel matching the number three receiver as he runs the wheel. With number three not threatening vertical, he can help underneath of the post from the number two. There's endless route combinations I can show, and of course, every defense has a weakness that can be exploited if the offense knows what coverage they're getting, but you get the point. Putting a safety that can carry the number three receiver deep in place of a linebacker opens up other options. What other ways might this help? Let's look back to the week five game. One of the ways the Eagles try to combat the Rams bunch formation was to use a cover three buzz look, where the strong side safety would rotate down into the hook curl area. This means the backside hook curl defender had to play a three up technique, where he matches any deep crossing route coming back to his side. This can put the linebacker in a tough position, but switching this player out with someone who has more speed can alleviate some of that pressure. It can also free up that middle post safety from having to provide as much over the top support on a linebacker that is matched up on a faster player. That's just a couple of examples of matchup advantages dime personnel can give you in zone coverage. What about a man coverage? Well now, you can really move chess pieces around to get the matchups you want. In dime package on third and short, Seattle often opted to go with cover one hole where they would rotate a safety down to cover a tight end pre-snap while a linebacker would play the underneath hole. This helps in the run game as they can bring an extra man into the box, but also in the pass as you're more likely to get quicker throws on third and short. And that whole defender is there to help take away those short and intermediate passes. One of the linebackers is tasked with covering the running back, but by using dime personnel, you can have a safety covering that running back, which can come in handy when facing a running back like say, Christian McCaffrey in week 13. What if you have a linebacker that you're comfortable matching up with the opposing team's running back? Or what if they don't throw to their backs much? Well, now you could put that dime backer as a whole player. Those guys are really just reading the eyes of the quarterback and triggering on throws. Why not put an extremely explosive and physical player like Sidney Brown there? He will cover space faster than any linebacker the Eagles have.
and third and long, the Seahawks often opted to use cover one robber, where the safety not playing the deep post is now the whole player. This leaves the linebackers to cover the tight end and running back. Using dime personnel, you can get a defensive back on the tight end and leave a linebacker on the running back. The tight end is generally the more dangerous threat in third and long situations, as opposed to running backs, who generally either block or have a check down route, so you're not as concerned about having a linebacker on him. A big difference by having the safety play the hole versus the linebacker is that the safety rotating from top down is already in place to take away intermediate intermediate routes, as opposed to a linebacker who has to play from short to intermediate. Here, you can see how it forces the quarterback to take a lower percentage deep shot on third and long as the intermediate route is taken away. You can also get more creative with the safety as a whole player. In my video about Kevin Byard, I showed a cover one example where he switched roles with the nickelback mid play and matched the receiver coming across. That would be hard to ask most linebackers to do that. Oftentimes against trips, the defense will drop the safety down opposite of the trips formation to help take away crossing routes, which are a big man coverage beater. On this play against the Saints, instead of dropping the safety opposite of the trips formation, they have the safety to the trip side drop down. Look at what happens. The slot corner knows he can play with hard inside leverage because the safety is helping outside of him. The corner can play with hard outside leverage because of the safety being inside of him. Both routes are bracketed and the throw is forced underneath. Again, we have the dimebacker matching up on the tight end and he can close faster than a typical linebacker. Defenses can use that safety to double team a specific receiver or a number of other things. And as a changeup, they can use that dimebacker to blitz and oftentimes get a free rusher as teams tend to have mental lapses and forget about that extra defensive back being a threat to blitz. Or you can do it early in the game so the offense has a reminder that they need to keep the threat of the blitz in mind. Having faster personnel on the field greatly helps defenses take the air out of the offense and close space faster. That extra speed, quickness, and movement skills in space that defensive backs provide can be the difference in preventing the offense from gaining that extra yard that they need for the first down. Now, you still have to go out there and cover, and you still have to take good angles and tackle. Just running more dime personnel doesn't mean your defense will be better, but it does give the coordinator more tools to work with. Dime personnel is a great tool to have, especially on third downs, and considering the Eagles are 19th in third down conversion rate allowed, it's an area of their defense that can be improved. Bayard, Blankenship, and Brown are all versatile players that share similar traits while still possessing unique and different skill sets that can be deployed in various ways. With all three healthy, expect Asai to get a little devious.